Hello everybody, it's October, finally, and now the spooky reviews can begin. Starting with the new Disney Plus movie, Hocus Pocus 2. The sequel to Hocus Pocus, obviously, which is a movie I grew up with and uh, have a good amount of nostalgia for. You know, this was one of those movies I used to watch with my grandmother, who was a big Bette Midler fan at the time. And I was a fan of all things kind of weird and spooky and Tim Burton-y. And Hocus Pocus fit the bill. It was a good movie. It was funny. I remember renting it on VHS. I remember owning the VHS. Uh, watching it, like I used to watch it, not even like necessarily on Halloween, just anytime I felt like it, I would just watch it throughout the year. It didn't matter. Uh, and eventually it became kind of a Halloween tradition as well. And I'm going to rewatch it very soon because this movie put me in the mood to uh, check out the original again, which I know quite well. But anyway, I had mixed uh, emotions about a sequel. I was both kind of excited for it because the whole cast, well, the, the trio of witches, um, you know, the cast members would be back. So I was happy about that. And I thought if they do it well, it could actually be awesome. Uh, but also it's Disney. It's current Disney. And current Disney scares me a little bit, uh, it tends to disappoint me more often than not. So I also had uh, that expectation there. I am not a huge fan of like sequels like 30 years later kind of deal you know the original film was in 1993 i believe i only remember that because they mentioned it quite a few times in the movie uh the sequel and you know what another thing that annoys me about current disney did now i guess did just not releasing movies to like theaters anymore they just gave up on that i guess so much for that i don't understand like it began with pinocchio where i started noticing like Oh, here is a movie that should have been in theaters that I would have definitely gone to see in theaters, and it's not in theaters. What the f what the hell is happening? And there's nothing going on at the movies. There's like a couple of horror movies that look interesting, not much else. Okay, some don't worry, darling. Like a couple of like smaller movies. Where's the this space to release Pinocchio? You could have released Pinocchio. You could have released Hocus Pocus too. I feel like that would have been easy money for Disney. Like releasing Hocus Pocus 2 in theaters on Halloween or at least for Halloween month seems like a no-brainer to me. And yet they decided to go another way straight to Disney+. Plus. I was very disappointed in that. I would have gone to the movies to see Hocus Pocus 2 100%. I don't get it. Personally, I don't get it. Try and explain it to me if you want uh, in the comments. I just don't get it. So I sat there on the small screen. What is happening with my hair right now? It's really irritating. It's going to become this kind of bouffant, uh, <laughs> Sanderson sister kind of a look, I guess, eventually. Um, so I sat there on the small screen watching this movie. And the movie begins, and it's kind of a prequel kind of deal, uh, where you see what happened when the Sanderson sisters in Salem uh, were kids. They were already kind of being pushed away by the villagers. Freaking Bette Midler Jr. Um, was already kind of causing trouble. There's this guy played by <laughs> whatever his name is, Buster from Arrested Development, who uh, is like this kind of reverend, kind of harsh, mean reverend uh, who hates them. Uh, and he's trying to get them kind of banished, basically. And as they are banished, they meet this other witch who's like... a a parrot i don't know just go with it um they meet this other witch who i don't know if we're meant to know who this is or whatever anyway she gives them the book of the dead with the eye that opens up and that's when they start getting into a lot more trouble and uh, then you cut to present day similar to uh, the original Hocus Pocus, uh, except in the original, they literally just burned to death, <laughs> which is kind of a very dark way to begin the movie. Um, in this one, it's, things are a little bit lighter to begin with. Okay, a house gets burned, but it's not quite, you know. Anyway, I thought that was kind of an interesting way of starting the movie. I didn't mind it too much. You know, it's a sequel. You get a bit of prequel stuff in there as well. Fine, whatever. You get to present day, you meet kind of new characters. There's this dude who uh, was meant to be like a kid in the original movie, but I don't think that character actually was there, who grew up, and he's this uh, guy running... Spoilers, by the way, oh, as always. 
the, he's this guy who's running the kind of um, Sanderson sister gift shop, which is kind of, uh, you know, based in the old house uh, where they used to make potions, etc. It's now a gift shop and it's Halloween, of course, so all the kids go there and check it out. Um, and uh, the two kids, there's like two, three main kids, I guess. There's two friends and one friend who's kind of like getting a little bit tired like she's got a boyfriend and she's getting tired of the whole uh, witch thing because they're kind of trying to be witches themselves right uh, they love the Sanderson sister lord they love that stuff so they kind of uh, they're really into it but one of them is kind of straying away and you're not sure if they're going to be friends again whatever uh, the three kids involved I like the main kid um, the friend with the glasses is really annoying so that's already kind of like, ugh, uh, is this kid going to be in the movie the whole time? The answer is yes. And it's not, uh, the actress is not great, but like the, the, the lines that she's given to say, it's just really annoying. But the main kid's fine, and the, the third one is fine as well. It's just kind of like, yeah, very annoying kid as one of the three kids, main characters in the movie. Just <laughs> letting you know right now, so you're not... Uh, too disappointed when it, you actually encounter that character. Um, and of course, the obvious happens where they bring back the witches to life. Um, and they do that because the guy at the gift shop give them, gives them like a candle. And it turns out to be the candle with the black flame that revives the Sanderson sisters. And um, they have until like nightfall, I guess, to kind of... Uh, try and make themselves like eternal again, either through uh, catching like virgins, which is actually the the plot of the first movie, and uh, just getting their kind of youth. Or in the case of this movie, trying to do a particular spell that gives them ultimate power, which the witch at the very beginning, when they were kids, uh, showed them, you know, but obviously the book itself, the book of the dead, doesn't want them to uh, use that spell because it's very dangerous, and uh, there's kind of like things that might happen if you do it, uh, which we learn about much later. So they haven't been allowed to do it all this time, and now they're kind of gonna go for it, but they get kind of distracted early in the movie because they're like, uh, they learn that the mayor of the city is uh, basically the descendant of the reverend from the beginning of the movie. So they want to get back at him first, uh, which is, yeah, kind of a weird plot point there. The plot of this movie is fine. Like, I didn't have a problem with the story in general. Uh, I thought it was okay. I feel like it needed uh, a few tweaks here and there for it to really kind of make sense. Because <laughs> the, the plot of the original film is very, very simple. They come back to life. Uh, they want to get as many teenagers as they can into one place so they can suck their souls, basically, and become young again forever. Um, you know, very simple, which can it deal? In this movie, you've got kind of like the reverend thing, which almost doesn't feel like you needed it there. Uh, it's interesting, but it's not really, you know, essential. Uh, you've got the, the zombie dude, Billy uh, Butcherson, who comes back again, and he's great, as usual, but... Uh, again, like you want him in the movie, but it doesn't feel very necessary. He's kind of doing his own thing with the guy from the gift shop the whole time. Uh, again, a few tweaks to the script might have made these two characters a little bit more feel a little bit more essential to the main story uh, because every apart from like the, what the three witches are doing, like everything else just feels like. Do we need it? Probably not. Um, it's fine. Again, it's fine, but it's not like, you know, stellar writing. Um, and so the two kids, who are joined by the third kid later on, um, have to try and mislead the Sanderson sisters as much as possible to kind of buy themselves time and eventually have to take them on just directly, you know, as they try to bring up that spell. Um, I liked this movie i liked it didn't love it okay i feel like it was there's something very underwhelming about this movie especially compared to the original but at the same time it kind of did what it tried to do which is just provide a fun experience 
I don't think this movie was aiming for anything more than that. I don't think it was aiming for anything more than just some some goofy Halloween shenanigans. And you got that. You got it. You know, like it didn't really go above and beyond. It didn't completely screw it up. It provided just kind of a fun little add-on to the first movie. And um, Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and uh, the other one. Sorry, I forget the actress's name. Um, they're all great. They're great. They do an excellent job in this movie. Uh, they really kind of managed to jump back into these roles really well. They're just so much fun. Like, those three, you know, it was so good to see them again together. Um, yeah, yeah, they have a great time. Clearly, they have a great time. Especially Bette Midler, like, really has a great time playing this character again. Uh, the only thing is, some of the songs in the movie feel like they, they've just been kind of slapped on with no rhyme or reason. Um, I don't... There's, like, one of them that's, like, okay. They're trying to recreate the same kind of... Uh, uh, thing is like the, I put a spell on you from like the first movie and it doesn't really hit it just kind of falls flat uh, and also we don't get a, a Sarah Jessica Parker song which is a shame because she's got like the best song in the first movie come on um, that character felt like it was I needed more I needed more Sarah Jessica Parker in this movie because she is funny um, but you know what I, I think they do an awesome job uh, Buster from <laughs> Arrested Development he does a good job, like he, he, you know, he's kind of typecast playing Buster at this point, but um, he's good, um, and then the film kind of becomes pretty epic in its own way, like, I wish we'd seen a little bit more of Salem, like, we don't really see a, many locations in this movie, it's basically, you're kind of at the school for two seconds, you're in Walgreens for like half an hour, uh, and then you're basically just in a cemetery for the, the whole second half of the film. Um, I, I needed things to move into kind of new directions a little bit. I needed to see more of that town. I needed the witches to be a little bit, just a little bit smarter because and meaner. Smarter and meaner because they, they're just kind of too nice in this movie. They're too nice and too dumb, uh, which they were always kind of dumb, let's be real, but like... I needed them to be more devious. Like, as soon as they found out that the little girls were leading them astray, they should have, like, turned it up to 11 and just, like, tried to, like, chase them down for real. And, like, they do have their plans. You know, they kind of, like, put a spell on the whole town, etc. And that's cool. Um, it's just, yeah, again, it even that falls a little bit flat. Um, but, you know the the writing when it comes to the witches is pretty good like they are likable they are funny uh they're definitely evil um and there's some clever things in this movie in terms of the writing uh like you know how there's this joke this old joke where uh they look for brooms right they look for brooms to kind of fly off uh, wherever they want and sarah jessica parker always aims for like the vacuum cleaner and now the other one has these kind of like uh, these robot kind of little hoovers like on the ground, like these round things. And she's got one on each foot. And uh, at first you're like, okay, it's kind of a dumb evolution of that joke with the evolution of technology, etc. It's funny. It's funny. It's fine. Uh, but later on, those actually play a part in saving them because uh, they've been kind of circled in salt, which is the only way you can keep their spells out. Uh, and th those things show up and, like, Hoover, like, vacuumed the whole ground. Uh, I thought that was a clever way of giving those things kind of a purpose. Um, you know, there's little things like that that I thought, oh, that's kind of clever. Um, and then there's the whole kind of climax of the movie where um, they bring up this spell where uh, they're going to have ultimate power. And what that means is they, they can just shoot, kind of, they all can shoot laser beams out of their fingers. <laughs> That's pretty much all it is. Um, and it's interesting. There's a few interesting things that happen. Uh, one of them is that means that the three witches are kind of on the same level of power at that point. And that creates um, some bickering between the witches. I thought that was really cool made sense to me like Sarah Jessica Parker kind of 
stands up for herself for once. I thought that was cool. And the other thing that it does is it shows how much these three actually care for each other because the the kind of um, the thing that goes wrong if you bring up this spell is that uh, you only one of them can have ultimate power, so the other two kind of fade away. They disappear. They die basically. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it. This movie, honestly, like the climax has a lot of heart to it, and I appreciated that. I thought that was kind of sweet, uh, the sacrifice that Bette Midler's character uh, makes for her sisters is actually, like, genuinely sweet. Um, and the other thing that happens is the the kids, the three kids, one of them, you know, turns out to actually be a witch, and they can all kind of, like, channel her power to the three of them, and they're kind of like the, the, genera- the next generation and they're kind of the next generation of the Sanderson sisters. Uh, they walk the same way at the end. It was it was cute. Like this movie was cute, essentially. Like it's not a great movie. It's got flaws. The writing could be a bit better in places. It could be a lot tighter in terms of the story. Um, the jokes as well. You know, some of them are kind of hit and miss. The songs are hit and miss. But you know what? At the end of the day, like I said at the very beginning. The movie does the job, you know, if you want to put your kids in front of a funny, silly, you know, spooky kind of movie for Halloween, you could do a lot worse than Hocus Pocus 2, okay? You could do a lot better, you could do Hocus Pocus, but if they like the first movie, this movie's totally fine, just put them in front of the movie, they'll love it. Um, I had a good time watching it, Uh, I don't regret watching it, I wish it'd been... Uh, even better, but uh, what can you do? You can have everything. It's a, it's just amazing that Disney didn't completely screw that up. Um, and the interesting thing, and the interesting thing at the end of the day is that the movie ends with kind of a cliffhanger, like the the kind of witch, the witches are gone, but are they gone forever? Maybe not, because there's another there's another candle, and then the the witch from the very beginning shows up at the end, and then you're like. Because that character hasn't been explored at all. Like, you only see her at the very beginning of the movie. So, they are leading to a third movie. Like, obviously, I would say. And I'm I'm down. Like, I will watch that movie. I'm kind of excited about it now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. You know what? This movie, it's a, it's, a, it's a solid Halloween romp. But it's not a great movie. Okay? So, that's the kind of nuance there. Hopefully, they can fix some of the... Little issues that they had in this movie in the third one. I don't fully expect them to. My main hope is that they release the third movie in theaters. But I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Hopefully, up and by that point, hopefully, uh, Disney would have got over this kind of no theaters thing. And then we can get back to having uh, movies on the big screen, which is kind of the whole point of watching movies so thank you for watching this review i've got another kind of a disney spooky review of uh the haunted mansion coming up soon as well check this out on the website somewhere just click around all right take care everybody see you in the next review